Hello, my name is Deb and welcome to my Floss Tube channel. I am the Traveling Stocking Stitcher and what I do is I show Christmas stockings that I've stitched. I've stitched a lot and I also um, show travel related theme uh, items that I've stitched that remind me of places that I visited. And so with that uh, I like to create a theme for every episode and today's theme is going to be Santa's reindeer uh, for the stockings and I'm also going to take you a tour on the town of Sintra, Portugal. I've stitched up a piece that shows a lot of the landmarks and I'll take you on a little tour of that and show you how that looks. So, uh, like I said, if you've not been here before, welcome. But if you have, I uh, appreciate you. Um, this is my third video. My last video got really good response. I've got almost 3,000 video uh, watches on that as well. And I've had a lot of really great comments from people and I really appreciate that uh, that response. A lot of fun interacting with, with guys. And I had a lot of comments about, uh, and I did a fancy lady promenade uh, episode, and I dressed for the occasion. I blinked it up a little bit. And so there were a number of comments that people, about people wondering what, what I was going to do when I covered things like reindeer, and I think the cats is another theme that I'm going to have upcoming. And so I thought about it a little bit, and I thought, well, do I really want to be that woman? And then I thought, well, I kind of am that woman. Um, so I decided to let my inner weirdo out. And turns out it was not that far down below the surface. Um, but today, we are going to be wearing my reindeer earring. Earrings, my Rudolph earrings. These come out every Christmas. And even though it's just March right now, we're going to be talking about reindeers today. So, reindeer, reindeers. Um, in honor of that, I do have a joke for you. Uh, why did Mrs. Claus tell Santa Claus to bring an umbrella? Because of the reindeer. So that was for all the five-year-olds in the audience. I know a lot of five-year-olds watch Floss too. So uh, the way I got started in this doing this is I made stockings for everybody in the family, gave them all out, came home to my apartment, single at the time, and I sat back and I looked at the one stocking that I'd made for myself all by itself, and it looked very lonely, and I decided I needed some friends. So I hit on the idea of creating Christmas themed names. And so I started with Santa's reindeer. It gave me eight. I figured, no, oh, I'm not going to do eight, maybe nine with Rudolph. Uh, that'll take me forever to do those. Um, so I got started, and like I said, these were like in the mid-90s that I stitched these. So I'm going to show you those today. And as I was putting this together, I started thinking, well, you know, it's not going to be a lot of fun for people to look at things that are probably out of print. Um, you could you know, part of the fun of floss tube is you see these things and you feel enabled and you go over to Etsy and you search for them and you buy a bunch of stuff. And here you'd have to go over to eBay and spend hundreds of dollars on the out of print things if you can find them at all. So it was actually a good exercise for me to go through and say, are these the stockings that I would have stitched if I had the choice? Because I come from the days we had Franks. I don't know if anybody remembers Franks, but there was a half garden store, half craft store. You go in and uh, you'd go to the cross stitch aisle and you'd go over and you'd pick up the one Christmas stocking kit that was there because it was always just one at a time and it was always 14 count white and you'd pick it up and you'd go home you'd dutifully stitch it and then hopefully the next time you went back they maybe had a different pattern out available. So this was not what we know today with this explosion of patterns on Etsy and the designers and this it really is the golden age, the renaissance of, of needlework and, and cross stitch. Um, so based on that, if I had to do it all, all over again, would these be the things that I would stitch? So it was a fun exercise for me to think about that. So in addition to showing you the ones I have stitched, I'm going to show you things that I think might be suitable um, alternatives, things that if I had to do it over again I might want to stitch differently. Because um, a lot of the patterns back then were very juvenile too, and so you kind of see that as well. And I might not have chosen some of the things I chose, but really didn't have very many options. So one of the other things, I'm going to try to remember to do this, because my run-throughs that I've been doing practicing with, I keep forgetting to show you this, but the way I d display my stockings is I also collect Christmas stocking holders. And here's a picture of my porch, and I have a sunroom in the back of the house, and I put the Christmas stocking holders on the ledge and hang the Christmas uh, stockings from, from those hangers. Let's get started, let the reindeer games begin, and we'll start out with... I'll show you this one first. This is my one of my favorite ones because it's so colorful. It's a bunch of jingle bells and it looks like a Christmas tree and it makes a little noise. 
And first up is, I'll show you the pattern first. So this is from, this is not terribly old, it's summer of 2013, and it's a Stony Creek Cross Stitch Collection magazine, it's the annual Christmas issue, and it's called Dash Away All, this is their cover. And this is available, this is on, I've seen it on 123Stitch, I've seen it on the Stony Creek um, website, so you can still get this as well. And so this is one that I made, and this is what it actually looks like. Now we stick it on the hanger and bring it up like this and we show you here is Dasher. Actually, get rid of that. And it's on navy and I counted this five times. I don't know, I kept coming up with 17 count. I don't think there is a 17 count, but it wasn't quite 16 and it wasn't quite 18. So. I would have done it over. It calls for a 28 count, actually. Um, could have been done on a 14 count. I think 14 count Ada is a good solution because it gives it a little more heft. And uh, so if you're an Ada stitcher, stockings are the perfect, th perfect thing. Um, I showed you last time on my video where I'd done the fancy ladies on linen as stockings, and I blamed it on the, the cotton backing that I had put on it. But I didn't think too much about the fact that, well, the linen is also real, you know, loose as well, and the Ada gives it really a little more body and holds the stockings better. So here you are, uh, you've got some Krynik in there, and a little town in the village, you see a lot of these. So actually I really like this one, this is not that old, um, but I would make them on a bigger size. But if I were to do it all over again, one of the things I might do would be this one here, because when I think of Dasher, um, I think of dashing through the snow. And so even though they're dashing through the sky, um, I think more along the lines of sleigh rides and, and those kinds of things. So this is a stocking or a pattern that I have bought um, probably six or eight months ago. And it's from Panna. It's a Russian company. It's called Fairy Tale Christmas Stocking. And this is, you know, before the war and all that. Not that we hold the Russian people responsible for that. Um, as they are suffering as well. And it's got it's beautiful colors, really. I think it's very, very pretty. It's got a very Dr. Zhivago vibe to it as well. So this is probably one I would do if I were to do it over as Dancer. Um, one other thing I wanted to mention about Dasher is, or this Dash Away All pattern, um, if you've got um, maybe three kids and you wanted them to have stockings that look very similar, or if uh, you know you and your spouse and you have one child and you want them all to look similar, there are two other patterns that they have. Um, one is called um, Sleepy Santa, Sleeping Santa. Uh, looks like this, and it's got, um, you know, Santa sleeping off the cookies and milk and massive jet lag and after a, a night of gift giving. And then you also have one called Up on the Rooftop. And again, they're all done on Navy. They all are done by Stony Creek. They all look very similar. And so I think that would be a nice thing to make uh, a set of similar looking stockings if you're, that was something you wanted to do. So a suggestion uh, for that as well. All right, so... That is Dasher. Next up, we want to look at Prancer. Dasher, no, Dasher Dancer. Dancer. So, Dancer has been a trouble for me because this one is the one that's the most literal and visual dancer. You have an image of your head of dancing, and so I try to anthropomorphizing way too much, and over the years I just kept looking at stockings and trying to make it look like a reindeer and a dancer at the same time, and those two don't line up very often. So the first attempt I took, and I didn't have a dancer for the longest time, kept looking, kept looking, and then I found this one, and I thought this was maybe going to be it. This is a Season of Wonder, it's also a Stony Creek, and it's got this ballet slash fairy, probably a sugar plum fairy, dancing above this little girl's head in bed. And I actually did stitch this up, but again, I got halfway through, and I thought, this is not a reindeer, this is a sugar plum fairy. So I'll show you that in an episode when I talk about fairies and elves and those kinds of things. Um, so this was not to be dancer, even though she has a little tutu and stuff. There's not a lot of, you'd think, with Nutcracker and Clara, Clara um, 
I haven't really, I was going to do one called Clara and haven't found a suitable one for that either. So designers, if you're out there, you might want to think about that. So some more time went by and this last season I joined a Facebook group um, called Christmas Cross Stitch uh, Facebook group. There weren't a ton of people posting things, so I just decided I'm going to post a stocking a day and kind of get things rolling over the holiday season and just kind of maybe other people will chime in as well. And when I did that I felt, okay, now, now I'm under the gun, I'm under the pressure to find a suitable dancer. Uh, so before I got to New Year's Eve or New Year's Day, I wanted to be able to present at least a whip of a dancer. So I scrolled through my stuff, took a look at what I had out there, and I found a stocking that I had purchased. And it is um, from Cross Stitch Kits a la Etsy shop. And it is called Nor Nordic Reindeer. It looks like this. And so I started stitching on it. Here it is. And, you know, it's a reindeer. It looks like one of those doll horses, those Scandinavian doll horses with some antler or some ornaments in his head. And I was stitching away and everything was fine. And then I got in my head again and I thought, you know what, this does not scream. It does not scream dancer because none of those things, Scandinavian, wooden, horse, none of those things scream dancing reindeer. So put this one aside too. And then Flosstube. I joined Flosstube. It's my third video. It's going to do reindeer. I thought, okay, I'm under the gun now. I'm under the wire. I really need to come up with a dasher. So back into Google Drive and scrolling through my PDFs and hit me out of the blue. I don't know why this never occurred to me before. I bought this, I don't know, four or five months ago and just never clicked with the dancer in it. it actually is perfect and I was very pleased that I did this. It's Satsuma Street and I've done some uh, other Satsuma Streets and it's called Oh Dear. This is what it looks like. And uh, if you've seen any of my videos you know I can't leave well enough alone. I have to put a lot of uh, zhuzhing up on it and so I stitched it up and I glitzed it up and this stitch like within a week I had this pretty much done. It took a little extra time because of the the DMC uh, light effects and the Krynek, mostly Krynek in it, and the beads. But it was really pretty quick. So here is my version of Dancer. I changed a little bit um, the way they had the design. They had these little half lifesaver things um, both facing in the same direction. I flipped one upside down so that they had the bar up and above and below. But you can see it's got some shine in it and it's got beads. All the ornaments have either bugle beads or glass seed beads and this little garlandy stuff I did in Krynek and, and put each one of these little doodads here or collection of beads. So I had some fun with that. I'm very, very happy. I think this, this clearly is Dancer. And the reason I didn't finish it, even though I finished it you know, not too long ago, uh, I could have had time to stitch it up. But one of the comments I got was from somebody named Barbara and she wanted to know more about how I do finishing. And I might do that in another video, but I don't feel really comfortable. I'm not a great seamstress. That's kind of the weakest part, part, part of my, uh, my stocking game, to tell you the truth. Um, but it, she wanted to see what the back of it looks like. So here's what my back looks like. I'm not ashamed to show you. I don't care what it looks like. If I can make a stitch look better on the front by going through a different hole, then doing it on the back in the back looks worse. I don't care. I care more about the front looks what the front looks like. But here's my back. And this is what I'm going to back it with. I've got some pink, bright pink. It reads okay. Uh, some bright pink fabric, that, some felt that I'll put on the back. And one of the other things I did want to show you is on the pattern they showed um, what the, where the outline is. So what I typically do is I base this onto the pattern and if I'm sort of designing one where I'm adding things and stuff. I maybe will do the basting first so I know where my, my lines are that I can't go out of bounds. Um, but this one I did afterwards so that when I go ahead and cut it, I know where to cut it and I know where to stitch the seams. So just basting around the edge. And what I did notice on this one, I think I will come down a little bit, whoops, on the side here. I think I'll come down a little bit here and cut over that way because there's a lot of empty black space here. So I think I'll come down here and go over, whoops, that way. And then even over here, I might round this heel up a little bit. This is really 
hard to do. Round the heel up a little bit and then come, come up a little bit because those are how most of my stockings are set up. So there, finally, finally is a dancer. Completes my, my set. We'll be able to see all of the reindeer today. So after dancer, we have Prancer. Now Prancer, you have seen this before if you watched my first video. This is the stocking that I did for myself. This is from Good Shepherd. I don't know if they're even in business anymore. Um, but it is a 1988, there's some vintage for you, um, stocking of, again, Santa dashing through the sky with his reindeer and the moon in the town below. So very similar theme that we've seen a lot. And so I made this for myself, and I also made it for Prancer. We won't dwell on him. Like I said, you may have seen him before. That's all we got. So, uh, would I do that one over again? What I would do over uh, on that one is... This is what I bought thinking I would redo it for myself. Instead of redoing Prancer, I'd leave Prancer well enough alone and I would do this for myself. And I've had this for a while. It's the Dimensions Gold collection and it is Sleigh Ride at Dusk stocking. And I would probably do this for Prancer instead of myself because you've got, again, a prancing horse. And to tell you the truth, when I look at this, I see a lot of white, and I see a lot of blue, and I see a lot of blending, and I see a lot of... <sighs> Honestly, it exhausts me when I look at this one. So, while I think it's very pretty... <sighs> yeah, I mean, if it didn't have so much blue, and so much white, and so much white, and so much white, uh, I might think about it. Um, but for right now, this is not high on my list of substituting things out. But you might like it. You might want to do it. So that is my recommendation to replace Prancer. Uh, the thing I would maybe think about next would be, let's see, this Prancer, uh, Vixen. This is at Dimensions. I really like this one. I think this is cute. It is uh, 1984, um, and it is, I think, pretty cute. I've done this one a couple times. And I've done this for um, my sister or my nephew's wife. And here is my version. I'll put it on the stocking holder. This one is peace, and we wish we had peace. These things get some schwitz on it, and it's hard to keep them from getting weird. All right, so this is my peace holder, and this is my vixen. So I think this is very cute. Uh, we've got the little bluebird wrapping the, the ribbon around just like he's dressed in Cinderella. We've got all kinds of little woodland creatures, a little smiling mouse up here. We've got the very cute uh, laughing chipmunk and a singing bear and little thumper. I love thumper and Bambi. And this one, I, the reason I like this so much too is it's got some texture to it. So you see, even though I don't really do very good on fresh knots, I seem to have had a good day here. Um, the cranberries and the popcorn are all French knots, so those turned out pretty good. And then you also have these little tassels on the here and over on this guy's hat here. And then there's a little rope around the, the bell for the reindeer. So he's very cute. So that is my Vixen. So Vixen if I'm thinking about a replacement for this, which again, I like this one, but I might do it for something else. Vixen is a female fox. And now you know that if you type fox into exit, you'll be, that's it, you'll be scrolling the rest of the day because there's plenty of fox options out there. Um, I found a couple that I think would make good stockings as alternatives. Um, one of them would be Sherry's House Etsy shop has a Woodlands animal. She's got a series of them. Um, some have the same animal, like, like there's one that has just all foxes but it's the same fox over and over again. Um, I like the, the Woodlands Animal one because it has a variety. It has not only a fox, but it's got owl and, and uh, reindeer and, and all kinds of different um, things. So this is what that looks like. So I think that might would be one of my choices that I would do. Um, I picked up a couple of things in my shop for Ukraine bucket, and these two I was thinking about doing is maybe a naughty and a nice, uh, where I've got the 
this star is for you, um, fox, and that would be the nice. And the naughty would be this ready for Christmas fox with a rabbit and ornaments on there because you know nothing good's going to be happening um, on that one. So that one would be a good naughty. And this is artwork by Dania Sukis. And um, I got this from the nonstop stitch Etsy shop. And like I say, they're out of Ukraine. So I thought those would be kind of cute ones. That, uh, I thought those were very cute to do. And then I also had a thought. What's the fox that everybody's doing? It's the year in the woods fox, right? And you take a look at this guy, you center him up, make him the main part of the stocking, you take that house and a couple of trees and stick them on the toe, Christmas stocking. So that would be an excellent fix it. Matter of fact, it's got me thinking now that I want to do a whole new set of reindeer with the updated version. But I got enough to do. So but that's a possibility. So if you haven't done the fox yet, who I thought I was the very last one, um, it's a thought for if you want to do some stockings with that. All right, so that is our Vixen. Next one up is Vixen Comet. This is the Comet that I did. And this is a Burnett, is the company. Again, I don't know if they're in business. It's 1991, and it is a piece on Earth. And this one's okay, I guess. I think it's the houses that I really don't care for as much on this one. Um, you know, I see samplers and they all have houses on them. And I think I'm housed out. Um, so I don't know if that's what's going on here. But, because uh, I like the lion and I like the lamb. And they're cute. Um, so I'll show you what that one looks like. Grab one of these here. What oh, is... Did I use this one yet? I don't think so. I'm not going to remember to do this on everyone, but here is a Christmas tree. There you go. And here is Comet. And a little bit of Krynik in the little stars next to the Peace on Earth. And a little bit around the candle. That is a very cute lamb, got to admit that. But I'm not a big heart stuff either, so I think that might be what's kind of going on there as well. So, what's going on here? I must have missed some stitches. That's interesting. I've not noticed that, and I've had them up for 20 years. All right, it's amazing what you do when you look at them closely on camera. So, that is my comment. Would I do it today? Probably not. But, my last video I talked about an alternative um, fancy lady stocking that you might want to do and it is the Stargazer by Mirabilia. Comet, Stargazer. She's looking at the heavens and looking at the stars, and there's probably a comet floating by up there as well. So I think she would make an ideal candidate for that. And uh, I recently saw um, this done. Uh, at, if you're going go to uh, go to Angie Stokes and look at her latest video, it's the March 19th, 2022 video. It's called, Well, You Guys, Look What I've Got, is the, the title of her video. And she has framed up a mirabilia on the most beautiful fabric. It's got this, this galaxy-looking fabric uh, that she's done it on. And one of my concerns with the Stargazer is it didn't look like Christmas. The dress didn't look like Christmas. But next to that fabric, the dress worked. It was just, just gorgeous. I don't think she did a conversion on the, the, the dress. Um, I don't do a lot of things with fabric because... A colored fabric because I don't, color's not my strong point, picking colors. And I think I would just pick something that would just blend into the background. And I grew up stitching on white Ada, so what do I know? Um, but that's one where I think really enhances it. Because sometimes you, you almost lose the pattern. That's my other worry about things, that things get too crazy. So unless you're doing a mermaid or something where it's the deep blue sea or something like this, um, I really think the, the colored fabric brings it out nicely. So go check out her video. You'll, you'll be stunned and amazed by that. Uh, next thing, um, oh, would be, oh, that would be my do-over on that one as well. So next one would be Cupid. So this one is also a good shepherd. It is a 1991, and oh, sorry about the glare. Uh, this one is teddy bears and a reindeer. And this is what it looks like. What haven't I shown yet? Here's one. This is a 
Christmas tree and it's kind of, it's actually, uh, I don't know, like a pewter kind of a thing. I really like this. It's got the colored glass beads in there. So that's one of my favorites, that Christmas tree. You kind of see it like that. So that's one of my hangers. And here's Cupid. Again, it has a little bit of uh, the jingle bells or Kreinecke there or some sort of specialty thread. I don't remember anymore, but yeah, it's all right. If I did Cupid over again, this is another tricky one because there's not a lot of crossover between, you know, cherubs and diapers with shooting arrows and reindeer and Christmas. So coming up with a, a suitable Cupid. Um, so kind of keeping with a cute theme. I mean, reindeer and hedgehog is a, a dimensions kit. Looks like this, but I think maybe I would would maybe use so because because there's not a lot of Valentine's Day Christmas crossover. Um, that's probably about as close as you're gonna get. So that's Cupid. Next up is Donner. Now this one I've stitched and I stitched and I stitched three times. I have stitched this thing. So here it is. It is a Dimensions. It is Charles Wysocki is the designer. Wysocki Holidays. There's a number of different patterns in this pamphlet. And here's the one that I've stitched up in the corner here. And this is what it looks like. Oh, I'm not used. Do I use this joy one? Sorry, I'm just, I don't have this organized very well. I've forgotten if I used this one already. So I think I did. Oh well. If I didn't, how about this joy one? Have you seen this one? This says Joy 2. So here we go. This is what I've used for Donner. And again, houses, 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 houses. And right up top, there is an awful lot of blue. There are still some nights when I go to sleep and I close my eyes and I think of this blue and I'm stitching it all over again. It, it, it left an impression. So, that's my Donner. So what would I do differently on that one? I mean, I, I don't mind it. I like it. But after the third time through, I'm kind of tired of looking at it. And so, Donner and Blitzen, these, these are actually good ones because it allows you to, you don't have any preconceived notions except for the Donner party, and that is the wrong answer. You don't want to put that on there. But this is what I consider the, the free spot in Bingo. This is the the blank tile in Scrabble. This is the Rorschach ink blot. You can project whatever you want onto it because nobody has um, Donner and Blitzen. Nobody has any preconceived notions about that. So it allows you to use some of those patterns that you can't always associate readily with a name. So uh, this is one that I, I like this pattern, but I just haven't picked out a Christmas name for it that I can use. So this one is called, uh, it's also a Stony Creek, it's called Silver Bells Christmas. There's a variety of patterns in here. And here it is. And so I've always liked this one. It does have a lot of stuff going on on it. It's got a lot of um, blending filaments. It's got a lot of, it's got um, um, some beads. It has buttons. It's got a lot of, uh, Stony Creek does a lot of extra extra. Um, but I don't really see from this picture what some of those things are. So I'm not sure. You could probably just fit. I just don't like to have to buy. Oh, it looks like there's like a little heart one button here. and I just like having to shell out like five or ten bucks just for a couple of little doodads. So sometimes I'll just stitch in, like I can stitch in a little heart. I would do the same thing. So that's one that I might burn on a daughter. Next up, we have Blitzen, and I don't have a picture of this one because the kit that I did when I did my Facebook uh, stocking thing, one of the people asked if that was available, and so I passed the stash on that one, but it looks like this. I took a picture before I left, or before I sent it on its way, and so this is what the stocking looks like. I'm not going to do the stocking holders. It's just a nightmare, so just knock them over. All right, so this is what Blitzen looks like. And again, there is a lot of green, there is a lot of white. So, it's cute. 
and, and snowmen this is also a good one for you know because once you do a frosty snow fr frosty stocking there aren't a lot of other snowmen names so if you have a lot of stockings that have snowmen on it it's hard to use those up with a Christmas theme thing so not a bad choice for for uh, Blitzen and if I were going to do it over this kind of violates my rule of showing you things are out of print. I don't know honestly if this is out of print or where it came from. I bought it off of Etsy. It looks like it was ripped out of a magazine, but it doesn't even list what the name of the magazine was. It's called, and even in the own in the the uh, the magazine itself, it's got two names. It's called Sparkle and Shine, and it's also called Sparkly Ornament Stocking. So here's what it looks like. It's on Black Ada. It's just got a couple of of colors, I think like 70, 782 or 783 or something like that. And then I think it's got some gold crinic or something in it and some gold and black beads. But I think this is pretty, and again, I don't know a Christmas name to put on this one, so I figured this might be a good choice for Blitzen. Apologize if it is out of, out of um, print and you can't find it, but that's kind of what I wanted to use that for. Alright, so that covers the basic reindeer. Now we move on to the heavy hitters we get Rudolph. And this is one where I started, when I picked up cross stitching again, I took a little break, and when I picked it up again, I bought this, uh, I'd gotten this uh, pattern on Amazon a while back, not too long ago, and uh, I really wanted to stitch it when I started stitching again. Um, this is the first one I picked up. And here it is. I don't know that it says stitchdmc.com, I don't think it's under that anymore, but again, when I did the Facebook page uh, postings of stockings, um, somebody asked me about this from the UK, and she was able to find it on Amazon just by searching, you know, reindeer or Christmas stocking, stocking cross stitch, uh, and was able to locate it. And here he is, he's very cute. And this is what Rudolph looks like. Okay, I'll do this one more time because I do have reindeer. There's a one that looks like a reindeer. There it is. And it is the one I've used for Rudolph. So here he is. He's, I just love the colors on this. They're not traditional Christmas colors because they're, um, I don't know how they read, but they are a, a turquoise and a coral and a pink. And I just, and got this very retro, mid-century modern vibe to him. And I, I chose the, the lettering up above. It didn't have lettering. It had um, it had like a bunch of stars across the top. And I could have made him a little bigger because he is substantially smaller. You compare him to a normal stocking, and he is substantially smaller. Um, and he also is facing the wrong way. Again, I picked up cross stitching. I think I was in a hurry to start stitching this, and didn't think twice about the fact that he was pointing the wrong direction, all my other stockings faced, faced the other way. And if I had thought about it for a minute, I would just have taken a picture of the pattern, gone into my, I have an Android, so I'd go into my um, uh, gallery, go to edit, and push the little flip button, and there it goes. Just that simple. Things that would have been unimaginable. Oh, by the way, I do have a shout out that I forgot about. Stitchy Witch 42 she's got a, a video of it's fairly old, but she talks about stockings that she made for her whole family. And there's one that she wanted, she had the same problem, the pattern was reversed. And this is a fairly old video, so it was, you know, before, you know, a lot of technology and phones, probably, uh, when she made this particular stocking. And she talks about how she took the pattern, and in her head, in her head, she reversed and stitched the pattern the opposite way. Let me say that again. In her head, she did that. She reversed the pattern. I just pushed a button, so I, my hat's off to her. So, uh, this is Rudolph. Of course, Rudolph has girlfriend, needs girlfriend. So, I thought, you know what I could do? Um, I would, she needs a little bow on top of her head. There's a, I, took, and I took the pattern, and I took off the antlers, and I stitched, or I drew up a little bow with little polka dots on it, and I switched the colors. So she became pink, and the turquoise became the background, and the coral became the bow and the top, and there they are together, and they're so sweet. I really love them. I think they're gorgeous. So would I change them? Probably not. I think they're adorable. Plus, 
you can't find any real Rudolph um, licensed stuff. There were some old things, some um, uh, leisure arts, I think, and even Dimensions has like a Santa and Rudolph at the North Pole and some other stuff, but you can't find them. And did I say that it's the golden age of cross-stitch that Rankin Bass could be making boatloads of money on the licensing of these things and making stockings? So just a bug in the ear of whoever is in charge over there, if there is anybody anymore. Um, make some stockings designs. Sell them on Etsy. People would buy them. I would buy them. All right, so that's my rant. Those are my Christmas stockings that I have done. And I do have an alternative. If I needed to, to, to redo one, um, Oh Dear by It's So, so Emma by the Fat Quarter Shop is one where, again, you could do some uh, eyelashes and bow and lose the antlers. So that might be a Clarice alternative. Um, but yeah, the Rudolph one, if unless I can find that, that one that is out of print, um, I can't think of another one. Another little fact for you, Rudolph, uh, the Red Nose Ranger TV show, if you recall, Fireball is the son of Blitzen, so that's another stocking alternative if you don't have enough stockings. Uh, to, so Rudolph, if you run out of reindeers but you haven't run out of stockings, you can do a Fireball one. I've not done that before. And uh, Donner in the TV show is actually Rudolph's father, so that's something to think about as well. Uh, and one other fun fact, as long as we're talking about Blitzen uh, and uh, Donner and Blitzen, in Twas the Night Before Christmas, the final two reindeer are actually called Dunder and Blixem, and it means thunder and lightning in collo collo colloquial New York Dutch. So, food for thought. If you find a reindeer with lightning bolts or thunder, it might be a good alternative for you as well. All right. So one other thing as I was thinking about the reindeer, I, there's some reindeer patterns out there that are really reindeer. And so instead of trying to fix them to the name, maybe a reindeer lineup. So I've got some patterns that I'm just going to pop up here. I don't have all of them. Actually, I don't have any of these, I don't think. Um, I do have one. This is an old one. It's Santa's Helper. It's a Bernat uh, from 1990. I made this for my niece. And it's got Santa and Rudolph there as well. So. Uh, I have an all reindeer lineup. This is one of them that I might consider stitching for that. Although I might also do this one for Santa. So I don't have a Santa one yet. Um, some of the others that I thought of is To All a Good Night. Now this one, a couple of places. Cooler Classic Charts. Um, I think they've reprinted some of these because I bought this on 123 Stitch uh, a year or so ago. And their mock-ups aren't always the best because they're not actually stitched. Um, but it says it's designed by Nancy Rossi, and it is a cooler. But I've also found it in a Leisure Arts Publications, the Stocking for Hung book. And in this one, here it is, and that's a little better. Oops, easier to see the stitching on that one. I'll make it all sick. Right? There we go. Looks like that, and they've also done it on an afghan, as well as a stocking. So that's a nice one that um, you could do all Santa driving the sleigh through the sky and fill up eight reindeer with it. Um, another one that is kind of fun is Bad Landing Cross Stitch. This is from the Cross Stitch Ala Etsy shop. Uh, Bad Landing looks like this. Uh, there's one that I think is really cute. I've had a little trouble finding it, but it is in a book called A Cross Stitch Christmas, A Season to Remember. I don't have the book, but it's just called Reindeer, as far as I can tell. It's by Barbara Sestock, S-E-S-T-O-K. And I think this one's really cute. I think it's a smaller sized one, a little more petite. So. Um, but I think that one's cute. Um, Christmas Eve by Design Works is another Santa sleigh in the moon. Looks like this. And then there's Dancer by Barbara Ann. I really like this one a lot, and it's not really my style, but I like it. I don't know about the date up there in the middle of the thing. I might do something different with that. And I don't know what I would put on the toe, but I think this one's really, it's really cool. I don't quite get the idea of and I've seen a few of these where they've got the, the houses in their their antlers, but it works. Yeah. Um, Holiday Quaker Stocking by Bent Creek. This is a cute one, I think. Um, it's got a little reindeer and other ornaments and things around it. And Let It Snow Quaker by R-E-T-M um, is one where you can jostle, jostle around some of the snowflakes, put some of the, the Quaker 
motifs on the toe, and that might work as well. Uh, Lizzie Kate, who doesn't like some Lizzie Kate, and she's got a reindeer stocking. Again, this one might be a little more petite. Um, and then we've got Santa with Reindeer by Luca S., and I think this one might be out of print. It's really cute. You've got one of the reindeer with the little spectacles, and it's a cute one. Uh, we've got Christmas Moose by Cooler Design Studio. Again, moose versus reindeer. I mean, he looks like a reindeer. Is he a moose? He's cute. Um, reindeer Games by Sue Hillis is a wall hanging, and it's pretty long, but I think if you doubled up and put them side by side a little bit, or staggered them a little bit, you could maybe fit it onto a stocking and maybe put you know Rudolph or something on the toe, but I think this one might be a cute one to do as well. Reindeer on the Way is one by Lettuce Stitch. Again, Santa in the sleigh with the moon. Got a number of these choices. Santa's Flight by Dimension is another version of uh, Santa with a team of deer. And then we've got Woodland Christmas Stocking by Lettuce Stitch. And this one is the, the sky, and this one is so pretty, and you've got the, the animals and the deer standing around looking around the Christmas tree. So that's a cute one. And then one other thought I might have is Mirabilia has a whole set of reindeer, and you might want to make maybe smaller, because I don't think they're real big, um, make a smaller set of all the Dasher, Dancer, Prancer, Vixen, um, and she's even got a Rudolph one as well. So that might be a cute one, cute one you could do as well. So, And, oh, wait a minute, there's one more. Doreen Jones has a Santa reindeer and snowman that I think is cute as well. That So, so there's some options, some reindeer options for you that I have not stitched, but maybe you want to do. And I do have, if you, again, not run out of reindeer, but have, or not run out of stockings, but have run out of reindeer, uh, a little fun fact for you I found in doing research for this is L. Frank Baum, who wrote uh, Wonderful Wizard of Oz, also wrote a Christmas poem, and he had his own names of reindeer. He had a group of ten reindeer, and his uh, principal reindeer are called Flossy and Glossy, and then he gathers others up, and the pairs of those are called Racer and Pacer, um, there's Reckless and Speckless, you've got Fearless and Peerless, and Ready and Steady. So if you just have had not enough reindeer names, I've got some more for you there. So, Alright, so kind of concludes the reindeer portion of our show, um, but in keeping with the, the stocking theme, there's a couple of shout-outs I wanted to do. Um, and I think last time I did shout-outs that were theme-based, and I started to think a little bit more, and I think I want to break down my shout-outs a little bit, because I want to mention ones that fit the theme, and then I kind of want to do one that is just a, a floss tuber that I really like, and then I want to do some thank yous to people that have shouted me out. So in the shout-outs with theme, I've got a couple here. Um, Amanda at Lucky Chance Stitcher. She has done uh, shown a number of stockings on her floss tubes. And talk about a, a, a stitching soulmate. Every single thing that she has stitched, and I, without exception, every single thing I would stitch of hers. There, there's not one where I think, eh, everything she stitched I love. So if you like the things that I've shown you, go over there, you'll be delighted because she does some fabulous things. And then we also have Stephanie, who is the On Point Stitcher, and she's done a beautiful stocking for her sister um, that she's working on. Um, she also has some fancy ladies. She's done an In Blue project that she's just had framed up in her latest video, and it is stunning. And so check Stephanie out as well, uh, the On Point Stitcher, because she's got ballet background. Um, so then, in the category of just a floss tuber that I've really enjoyed. Maybe it's a, maybe a new floss tuber. I've decided to call this the seal of approval shout out. And this one is Angie, and she is a tiny house stitcher. And she's just done a couple of, of uh, floss tubes. Her first one is hilarious. Um, the second one she goes through, she lives in a tiny house, and she goes through some pictures of her tiny house because there was a lot of interest in her tiny house. Um, so, so she's a very natural, um, does a great job, and like I say, very, very funny. And then I've got some that are, are, are just, have been so kind to me, and one that I should have shouted out before, and it is Elisa, and she is with, uh, she is uh, E underscore Crafting Colorado, and she had mentioned, she was the first person, uh, one of, the, when I posted my first video, um, she was the second person to leave a comment, and 
she was so flattering and kind, and she um, not only did that, but she also mentioned me to another person I'm going to talk about in a second, but she referred me to somebody else, uh, referred somebody else to my video, and um, I told her I need to hire you as my publicist because you're getting the word out uh, much better than I am about things. And she does great videos. She's only been doing it for maybe about six, eight months. And But the stuff that she does, she does these fabulous, um, a lot of Hades, uh, Heaven and Earth designs, these full coverage. They're beautiful. She's got this birds in bloom. And I'm just warning you, put a pair of sunglasses on before you watch that video because it is so bright and so beautiful and vibrant. It's stunning. So she's done some really lovely things, and she's been just so very kind. She gave me a, a, a really nice shout out. Um, and the people that have shouted me out, I'm going to ask you at the end of my video. I'll, there's a there'll be a link to a playlist of shout outs, and the people who've shouted me out, I've included their videos on there. And I want you to make it as easy as possible for you to get over and look at those because they're really people that are worth watching. Uh, and I'll, I'll put the stuff down below as usual too, but. Catherine at Needleberry Stitcher is another one. I mentioned her in my second video, and coincidentally, she commented just before, uh, after watching my first video, she hadn't seen my second video, and she commented, and I said, oh, coincidentally, I just happened to have shouted you out, and she thanked me for the video and said she enjoyed it. And then she did a very lovely um, uh, review of, of my video, too. So she, she's extremely funny. She's Catch and Fire. She's very, very popular. I've seen a number of people shout her out because she really is does a great job. She's gone through Mirabilia's and she's not only um, very entertaining, but she's also very informational. When she did her Mirabilia walkthrough, she gave you a rundown of how many beads were in things and how much Krynik was in things and how big these things were. So if you're looking for, you know, if you're a starter kit Mirabilia and you're thinking, well, I don't know if I really want to bite off more than I can chew, you could pick one of the, the lesser ones. If you really want to go bling it up and give me as much glitz and glitter as you possibly can, you, you knew that. So it really, I thought, was a, a nice public service other than just holding up the patterns and showing them. And then I also want to thank Sarah at Our Stitching Kingdom. Um, she was the first one to call me out, and there's nothing quite like your first shout-out. Um, it, it's very exhilarating. It's a lot of fun, and I was very happy. She's been very instrumental in helping with the what's called the under 1,000 subs club um, because YouTube has this catch-22 that you can't get seen unless you're seen and so to get your videos up where people can see them people have to watch them and people aren't gonna watch them unless they get them put in front of them so she's been very helpful about that and I was very flattered that she called me out she does um, some fancy ladies she does some um, chatelaines which I have on order I'm waiting for the, the Glorianas to come in, um, but she's done some there, so I'm looking forward to, to seeing some of her stuff as well, and uh, I recommend you, you check her out as well. She'll be in that shout-out reel. Um, one other thing about the video that I did last time, um, people have asked me for the conversion, particularly about the Santa Lucia one, and I'm working on it, but I also have to do my taxes, so I'll do that after I get my taxes done, hopefully, so soon, in a couple of days. Um, and just I can't thank the, the floss tube community enough. They've been so kind um, and really nice. Um, and speaking of random act of kindness, one of the comments was somebody, uh, Jane, who talked about she liked the fact that I like beating things. And she shared with me that she had done, um, you talk about your random act of kindness. This is a deliberate act of kindness. Um, she likes doing beads, so she took somebody else's project who did not like doing beads, and she sewed on 1,338 beads on a project that was not even her own. That is a deliberate act of kindness. That is not buying somebody behind you in Starbucks a double, triple shot mochiato frappuccino. I don't drink coffee, so I don't know the words. This is a selfless act. So, uh, shout out to Jane as well there. Alright, so that covers our portion of stockings. Last thing we want to talk about is take a quick little trip through the town of Sintra. So Sintra, Portugal, I've always wanted to go to Spain and Portugal. I don't know if I always knew why. I didn't know a lot about Portugal. And uh, 
turns out it was a good choice. And as I started doing research, I learned about the town of Sintra. It's a UNESCO World Heritage Site. And we stayed four days there. And I'm glad we stayed there instead of going to Lisbon. We did a day trip to Lisbon. But Sintra was so lovely and so delightful and so much fun to see. There was so much enough to keep us busy there. We like the smaller towns because you feel like you can walk to all these things and, and see all the stuff and really um, get in, involved in everything. And so, as one of my Stitch Crew Crane purchases on Etsy, um, I bought um, from Awesome Pattern Studio, uh, a Ukrainian designer, and uh, they have uh, a bunch of different cities, and I showed these in my last video. So I grabbed one, I stitched it up, it was pretty quick, it took me about a week, and I, here's what it looks like. And this is the town of Sintra, and I'll show you, insert some of the pictures so you can kind of compare things, and I'll kind of walk you through the town here. So. There's a lot of 19th century romanticist architecture. A lot of the nobility um, would get out of Lisbon and build their villas and, and estates and things there. And so there is a castle that's almost Disney-esque to the point of being over the top. I mean, it's crazy, but the, the, that's where the monarchy fled to when they were getting out of Dodge, when they were trying to overthrow them. Um, and, and so it's been restored to 1910. And it's about a 40-minute train ride outside of Lisbon. So here we go. I'm um, going to start down here. This is the city hall. Oops, there's the city hall right here. And it looks kind of like that. And then there's some behind here is the... It's hard. To, I'll show you a picture of a model, and then I'll show you what it actually looks like. So this is this, and going over here is Montserrat Palace. Uh, and they have some lovely... This is kind of the colors that were in the... Um, Tile, they have a lot of tile work, um, so outside, so here's an example of some of the tile that they have out there. And there's this gate in the palace, Peña Palace, and it's up on, on top of a hill. And here is the tower, it looks a little bit like a big yellow, yellow silo. And so there's that, and then it was a little indistinct here. Here's in the pattern, you see that the, the, it's a little difficult to see, but I kind of made my own up. There's a couple of blue towers and it's all tile, blue tile and a little gateway that leads to the back here. And then the big red clock tower here didn't have a clock face on it so I modified that a little bit. And then back here we have the National Palace of Sintra and this has got these smokestacks back here and you can see those from all over town and they're actually the chimneys where they did the cooking. We took a tour and and sure enough, you look and there's these big dome-shaped, enormous smokestacks where the cooking fumes would go out. And one thing they didn't have, I added this. This was, they have Castello dos Moros, the Moorish castle. And so you could go and walk along these ramparts and look out over Sintra and see all the way to the ocean and um, put a little Portuguese flag on top there as well. And then I got down here and they have a lot of port, um, pastel colored houses, rows of houses, and there was this beautiful, um, it was actually a restaurant that had this beautiful blue color, so I switched the colors on that to make it look like that. That was just about a block away from our, our Airbnb. We had a fantastic Airbnb that had this enormous garden that was two layers of garden and it had three seating areas. It had flowing uh, wisteria. It was, it was just stunning. Fabulous. And then there's this the Moro, Moro, Moorish fountain. I think they did a really good job creating uh, an image of this because that looked exactly like that. And then there's a tuk tuk. These are little sightseeing kind of motorized rickshaws that you can rent and drive around in. Um, and I added, oops, sardines. They have a lot of colorful sardines that they sell as souvenirs and they're known for the cod and fish. And then there's this rooster. Uh, it's the national symbol of Portugal. You see these again a lot in souvenir shops and he has a little heart on him. This is what kind of the rooster. It's um, Galos de Barcelos um, and he's he's everywhere. You see him a lot. And then there's a couple more tile things. I just love the Portuguese tile. This one looks like a, kind of like a delft blue with the yellow and the white and the black and or excuse me the, 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 the dark blue and the white um, is a very common theme. And then this one here looks uh, looks like this particular picture here where a uh, little more yellow and gold and light blue and dark blue and white. Um, very pretty. I just love the tiles everywhere. Loved it so much that 
in doing my research, I realized there were tiles. And yes, I deliberately packed this pair of pants and stood next to every blue and white tile I could find and played Where, Where's Waldo all over the place with my camouflage Portuguese pants. So I had some fun with that. So that is a little town of Sintra. If you ever get the chance, I highly recommend it. It was lovely. And that is the end of my floss tube. Thank you so much for joining. Um, be sure to check out those shout out videos. Um, please comment. I've been enjoying those so much and responding to everybody. And, you know, liking is good. Subscribing is fun. Um, so thank you very much and I hope to see you again.